Well, what have you been up to online lately? No, not that, but if maybe you've created something exciting or you're working socially in interesting ways, in which case we want to know about it as it's time again for Pods and Blogs. Jamila, our intrepid, connected web wanderer, has been following up your tips this week. What have you got for us, Jamila? Hello, Rod. Well, I've had some enlightening chats online this week about whether or not the term geek is cool or not, and also what you'd want from a mobile if it could do almost anything. But more importantly, I've had some great emails letting me know what's going on, and that's always interesting because usually it's something I've missed. Now, you've got one of these pointers for us first, haven't you? I do. Earlier in the year, I chatted with Eddie Haskell, who's often resident in Second Life as a photographer. He got in touch to let me know that the world of 3D environments has a new contender that I had to see. And you know, he was right. Enter Blue Mars. It's the latest three-dimensional place online, and it has some amazing links to our real world as well. This is of Blue Mars. But to get a view from the inside, it seemed like a good idea to talk more to Eddie as well. He spent a lot of time in Second Life and a little time in Blue Mars. The main points of comparison are usually in this area. So what did he make of it? Oh, they're very, very different. Very, very... uh, And once you enter and get through the basic phase of each, you'll see how very different they are. Second Life was started uh, over six years ago. Really is a place to let people, to let uh, consumers develop the environment itself. There was not that much content made available by Linden Labs in the beginning. There was some, but users design houses, and users design clothes and shapes and skins and cities, but it really became, and it is in a way, a bit of a free-for-all. When you enter Blue Mars, you see how tightly controlled it is. When you go to a few of their developments or or cities that they're putting up there for a showcase. One I like is New Venice, by the way. It's beautiful. Now, it seems like the initial aims in both, I mean, you were talking about controlled environments there, but with Second Life, as you say, a a free-for-all, you can be what you want, you can make what you want, and you can kind of do what you want. But with Blue Mars, it seems it seems quite commercial. You know, it's sort of you know, come and see this museum. Maybe have a look at where you can buy things. It has a very very different uh, feeling. Yes, I think one of the misconceptions about Second Life, way back in the beginning, was Second Life was going to be this controlled commercial environment, a place where you buy cars, and you buy insurance policies, and go to university a place that's controlled really from the top down more, and it is not. What Second Life is, I feel, a creative environment. It can allow someone like me, and I don't have experience with photography, be creative director of one of the big magazines in Second Life, the Art Style. Mm -hmm. And uh, I like photography there. It's something I can do. Other people design houses and furniture and clothes and make money with it. Not a lot of money, but you know, you can end up doing fairly well and playing for your online gaming if you buy if, if you make things and sell them. But and let's face it, and this is what we have to uh, deal with, a lot of the stuff there does not look of commercial quality in second A lot of the regions and areas really look very, very messy. And I think going into a beautiful city online I think it may be interesting just to go in, rent space in an apartment or home, have everything be beautiful, and start enjoying virtual reality and socialization as it's supposed to be. At the same time as this new environment arriving that we will be able to explore in a slightly different way, Second Life has also been making its own headlines, though, hasn't it, with Nebraska. Can you explain to us a little bit more about what that's about? Nebraska, quite simply, is the vision of Second Life that magazines like Business Week and I think uh, concerns like the BBC or conglomerates like the BBC played up in late 2006 or early 2007. Wow, we have this thing called Second Life. It's a few years old. It's going to be a billion-dollar economy. Mm -hmm. And there were projections made of not a billion Linden dollars, which were four cents each, but a billion U.S. dollars, which we won't joke about what they will be worth in in the time coming, but 
there were outrageous projections being made. None of this happened. What did happen in the past three years were companies like IBM realized that the value of virtual reality for its first days was going to be in interaction. Second life in virtual reality as a means for people to get together and harness and collaborate and think and do things like plan projects and talk and voice, boy, this breaks down barriers like ways you've never seen. I feel that virtual reality is a massive commercial environment. You're going to have an avatar in there that's going to pick things out for you and buy things for you like cosmetics and clothes and automobiles. We're looking at something I feel that's at least five years away. But for now, organizations and businesses should definitely investigate Nebraska as a means of having very, very cost-effective collaboration, information sharing, and a way of breaking out of their traditional work shell. Eddie Haskell there, sharing his experience of a brave new world.